All right, again, guys. Oh, sanitizer, bucket, wash it, hang it, let it dry. It's good to go. Okay, so I've dumped uh, the liquid. I hit all the buckets. And the way I do that is I just pop these little black grommets. I've got a little uh, syringe, like you give your, there, there it is. Little syringe, I fill it up with the solution. I inject it, roll it around a little bit, put it back up, and, uh, and it's done. So uh, I've done all the whites, and then I've gone in, and you could see I just lay it right on top of the red. And I know it says to dilute it, but why am I gonna add water to my wine? No thank you. And I've gone through and added proper dosage to each one of these and you can see you can see my cap is cracking here man I mean this stuff is really probably gonna be hard and then I'm just I'm gonna push it down mix it in really incorporate it well oh, yeah. and here's a here's a telltale sign you need a little Fermate O. If you've ever smelt rotten eggs, whoops, rotten eggs, when you open up one of your containers, that's a sign your yeast are struggling. And when I say struggling, I mean they need more nutrients. Now, you don't just willy-nilly this and just keep adding nutrients, because what's gonna happen so you're gonna over, uh, you're gonna put too much into your must, into your wine, and then what's gonna happen is, um, when you're done and you've pressed your wine, your wine's gonna be filled with nutrients, and uh, it's gonna become a cesspool for bacteria if your pH isn't low enough and if you haven't sulfided your wine properly. So these. Uh, these are a little harder because of the shape of the vessel. But yeah, you can you can smell a couple of these are stressed. And that's okay. That's just again, I don't test. There's something in winemaking called yan. And uh, it's basically when you first get your batch of wine and grapes crushed, you send it into a testing laboratory and you could test for all sorts of good stuff yan is basically a test of nitrogen in the grapes it's going to tell you how your fermentation is going to go the stuff that we get out here again in chicago because it's picked and it takes time to get here and everything else ah, look at that solid that's about a foot of cap uh we we have a harder time fermenting it because these grapes, as fresh as they are, they're not right off the vine. I mean, think about it, right? In a winery in California, these guys are picking and crushing the same day and fermenting. So the fact that ours sits five, seven, 10 days or longer, depending on where you get your grapes from, makes our wine more challenged. And another thing, that's why, you know, old timers always say, I never add nothing to my wine, and it's always good. It's always good if you like freaking dessert wine that's sweeter than shit. And I do not. <sighs> because <sighs> these grapes sit in a cooler, they got to get transported, they got to get boxed. There's a lot of time that goes into getting these things to Chicago or wherever. So we need to add cultured yeast. We need to add yeast nutrients to our must to make sure that we're getting a proper strong fermentation. You've got a winery or a vineyard of your own you don't have to do this. It's not as critical. <laughs> but for us, we do. You want to make the best quality wine, highest quality wine, 
got to make sure to have a good, strong, vigorous, healthy fermentation. And this is just part of what we have to do to make sure our wine ferments dry when it's got 26 bricks. Okay, I'm switching hands because I know this son of a gun here on the end is going to kick my butt. These were all the Zins. This monstrosity is the cab. Oh, God. Oh, God. Man, that's a cap, I'll tell you what. Oof. Oh, man. That's a brute of a wine right there. That is, I feel like, I don't know, we'll see. I feel like this one's gonna be really good. Skin to juice ratio on this one's just through the roof. Beautiful color. Let me see. <coughs> ah, smells like raspberries. <coughs> you get a lot of the CO2 and alcohol. Boy, that smells like raspberries, man. That smells so good. It's gonna make a really, really nice, really nice wine. Cool, man. All right, so that's it, guys. That's adding Fermato a third, half, way through your fermentation, making sure you're punching down twice a day minimum. And again, I wish we had a garage that was a little bit more uh, sterile. We could do an open vessel fermentation so we can get rid of all that water vapor and concentrate the flavor. I mean, you can see these have already risen, man. I'm, I'm gonna have to punch these again. This one's down all the way. This one's still down. So, okay, cool, looks good. All the whites have been uh, inoculated with Fermato as well. They're just incredibly impressive. I mean, just blowing and going. And I still got to get that airlock. I'm going to clean that out tonight. Put a new one on it before I lose that bottle. But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. We'll see you next time.